Thank you for joining this lesson. We are continuing with X-rays. We have already tackled the production of X-rays together with the X-ray tube. And in this case, I want us to look at the properties of X-rays. Uh, we have a list of the properties here. The one is that uh, they travel in straight lines. This can be evidenced by placing uh, any material that cannot be penetrated by X-rays along their path and a shadow of that object will be cast on a screen in front of it. That will show that uh, X-rays travel in straight lines. They undergo reflection and diffraction, just like any other electromagnetic waves, because they say the X-rays are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Therefore, they undergo any other property, just like waves. Then they are not affected by electromagnetic, uh, electric or magnetic fields since they are not charged particles. So X-rays are just a type of energy, no positive charges, no negative charges. So when they pass through an electric or a magnetic field, they pass undeviated. The, the, the beam of X-ray is not deviated. They ionize gases by knocking off their electrons from air molecules. Actually, this is one of the reasons why we make sure that the X-ray tube is evacuated. This is to ensure that due to this property, they don't knock off, they don't ionize. That means they will lose a lot of energy for them to ionize air particles or gas particles. And so to avoid the loss of energy in the process of ionization, we make sure that uh, the tube is evacuated. So they cause ionization in similar terms. They affect photographic films. They affect photographic films. And also say that uh, they penetrate matter. They are able to pass easily through thin sheets of paper, metal foils, and body tissues. They also cause fluorescence in certain substances. Instead of fluorescence, we can, we can say they cause glow in certain substances. There are some materials which are called fluorescent materials. When X-rays hit the surfaces, the materials glow. Therefore, we can say they cause fluorescence in certain substances or materials. We have a hard and soft X-rays. These are properties of X-rays, whereby we say hard X-rays have higher frequency or even higher energy higher frequency and because energy in x-rays is given by hf whereby h is the Planck's constant and f is the frequency of the x-rays the total energy in uh, the total energy in the x-rays is affected by its frequency and therefore when the frequency is very high then the x-rays which will be produced will have a lot of energy they'll be called a hard x-rays so they have high frequency or rather short wavelength, hence high penetrating power. So the high energy enables the hard X-rays to have a high penetrating power. This is achieved by increasing the anode voltage in order to give the cathode rays more kinetic energy. Therefore, when the anode voltage is increased, we usually say that uh, the higher the potential difference between anode and cathode, the greater the acceleration. That means the more they are accelerating, the greater the kinetic energy they will possess. And once the electrons have a great kinetic energy, during the conversion to X-rays, the same energy will be shown or will be evident in the X-rays produced. Uh, we can say that uh, these X-rays penetrate flesh, but are absorbed by bones. Therefore, they have a higher penetration power. They are able to penetrate body tissues, but they are stopped by bones. Soft X-rays. Uh, the soft X-rays are produced by electrons moving at a lower velocity. That means electrons which are having a, a lesser frequency compared to those producing hard X-rays. And uh, to produce soft X-rays, we have to lower the accelerating voltage. That means when accelerating voltage has been lowered, 
then it means there will be less acceleration and it means the moving electrons to the target will move with a lower velocity and hence lower kinetic energy. So the X-rays which will be produced will have lower energy and they'll be called soft X-rays. They are used to show malignant growth in body tissues because they only penetrate the soft tissues, but they can be stopped by malignant growths. So they can be used to detect malignant growths on the skin of a human being. We have a strength and intensity of X-rays. When we talk about strength, it's like we have already handled about strength when we were dealing with a hard and soft, because hard X-rays are strong X-rays and soft X-rays are uh, less strong. Soft X-rays are x-rays which are not very strong so we can look at intensity first that is the quantity of x-rays produced this is controlled by the amount of the heating current because we said at the cathode there is the heating filament which is supplied with current the greater the current the more the electrons which will get emitted in other words the greater the thermionic emission which will take place that means with a great current a lot of electrons are emitted and hence a higher number of x-rays so the greater the heating current the greater the number of electrons produced and hence more x-rays and hence more x-rays so that is how the intensity of x-rays can be varied by varying the heating current whereby if the current is increased there will be more electrons produced and hence more x-rays when the current is reduced there will be less heating effect there will be less thermionic emission and hence fewer electrons but when we talk about strength or quality of x-rays uh, this is controlled by the kinetic energy or rather velocity of the electrons and velocity with which the electrons will move at is achieved by increasing the accelerating potential that is the potential difference between the anode and the cathode therefore the greater the accelerating potential difference the greater the energy and the velocity that uh, x-rays uh, electrons will move with but once they reach the anode they will get converted to x-rays which means if the energy of the electrons was very high then the x-rays to be produced will relatively bear a greater energy then we have what you call uh, energy changes in an x-ray tube uh, when the cathode is heated electrons are emitted by thermionic emission they acquire electrical energy which can be expressed as energy equals to ev once in motion the electrical energy is converted to kinetic energy that is now the electron electron volts or the electron charge times the accelerating potential difference this is equal to half mass of an electron times the velocity squared the formula to give us a kinetic energy is one. Therefore, the electrical energy becomes kinetic energy. Then the energy of an electromagnetic wave can be calculated using the formula E equals to HF, where H is the Planck's constant and F is the frequency of the wave, the highest frequency of the X rays released after an electron if the target is when the greatest kinetic energy is lost that is hf maximum equals to ev it's good to know that uh, when this one is maximum when uh, frequency is maximum wavelength will be minimum because at the same time we can actually say that uh, energy is given by hf but now from the general wave equation we say that uh, velocity of moving electrons which is c is given by h f lambda sorry frequency times the uh, wavelength therefore we can say that instead of f we can use c out of lambda therefore energy is also given by 
h multiplied by instead of f i will use a c out of lambda therefore we can see that uh, energy is directly proportional to frequency but inversely proportional with wavelength therefore the greater the energy the greater the frequency but the greater the energy the lesser the wavelength therefore at maximum energy we will have minimum wavelength but maximum frequency 